Oh, it is good to be back. I thought that it would be a good idea to do a breakdown of pixel art animation. And by that, I mean, I really, really want to talk about dabbing. Now, what really interested me about the dab and uh, why I think dabbing is a really versatile animation is because the dab has been transformed into a punch. Like you have the idle animation and instead of immediately posing for the dab animation, you instead get a full 360 rotational oomph. And that is what I really want to talk about. So we have our keyframes, right? Like this is a pose and this is a pose, but what about everything in between and everything that comes after? For example, the second we leave the neutral position, we start to enter our anticipating action. Kyoko uh, quickly spins their body to the left and we can kind of consider this like a wind up. For example, if you want to jump, you kind of have to bend your legs down a bit, kind of like a spring, in order to be able to push yourself up. And as it turns out, that's exactly what Kyoko is doing as well. Um, near the end of the rotation, we get like a slight bend on the knees, again, like a spring, because on the moment of impact, uh, those legs are going to be extending outwards and slamming down. Uh, we're gonna get those arms uh, thrown into the air. Uh, this is the moment uh, where that oomph sound effect is added. Uh, because this is officially the uh, impact of that attack animation. And we really want to emphasize that it's an attack. So we're going to be holding that impact position for a bit. Uh, but we have a couple of things added, uh, like a dust cloud, uh, which goes into the air, or this rainbow that like moves uh, right behind them. This is uh, the moment we enter our follow through, which essentially means that we're no longer going to be attacking. We're just going to sort of try to go back to the neutral position. Uh, so we get a little bit of an overlapping animation while they're holding their pose, like seeing this hair slowly beginning to fall down or the dress stop flailing around. Uh, and it's a really good touch, which tries to sell motion uh, even when the character stops moving. And there you go. Now we're back to the neutral position, right? So uh, from the top, you have the neutral pose, you have anticipation, impact, and follow through. This is, in the most basic terms, how a lot of animation is done. Every animation follows the same pattern of neutral, anticipation, impact, follow through. And the real struggle, uh, especially for pixel art, is how do you convey those actions in a very confined space? If we look at the predecessor, River City Ransom, we can uh, see how it's super limited, but we can still see the neutral pose, the anticipation, impact, and follow through. In terms of attack animation, the only difference uh, between the game that came out in 1989 and the one that came out in 2019 is limitation. But the good thing is, uh, at its core, it still follows the same guidelines, right? <laughs> now, of course, the new one is a lot more defined. Uh, this entire screen has way more colors and pixels, uh, and we can see that nobody's really holding back with that. We've gotten rid of the black outlines because, eh, who, who needs them, right? We've added uh, so much more shading instead. I mean, even the, the knees are shadowed uh, here. It can choose to be borderless in its pixel art by falling back into the color variety to add depth and contrast, differentiating the ponytail from the head or the lower legs from the upper legs. And uh, that's, I think that's about it for this breakdown. There's of course like a ton of stuff that you can always talk about, but I don't want to, so goodbye. <laughs>